Okay, so our high poly is done, so we'll move on and do our low poly. What I'm going to do first is to put these into a... So what, these are all my high poly pieces, and I'm just going to stick them into onto a layer. So if I open up my layer editor and or layer window and just create a new layer for this high poly and so they they're all in there now so I can hide those on and off I'm also just going to grab all of them and I'm going to right click and go to clone clone as copy and then those clones I'm going to put into a new layer called low poly so now if I hide these on and off you can see I've just got the same a copy in each one so I've got a copy of them in a high poly layer and a copy in a low poly layer um, what I'll do is I'll hide off the high poly one and then I'll delete everything in here there's no point in me making a low poly of all of these pieces that are all the same so oh, I think I've deleted one I didn't want to there In fact, I don't seem to have that piece. So I'll just claim that over. There. Right, so yeah, like I say, get rid of all of these that I don't need. So I've just got one of each. So I'll make the low polys of these. I'll UV just the ones that I need to, and then I can copy them back over after that. That's the easiest way of stacking up your UVs, and well, the, the way that I find the easiest anyway. So I'm going to start with this piece of wood again, which is where we started with the high poly. And the first thing I'll do is remove the turbo smooth. I don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to isolate it, so Alt-Q to isolate that. And now it's just a case of starting to remove edges as much as anything else. So you just double click to select the entire loop. And then Control and Backspace to delete them out. So I know some people prefer to, when they're creating their low poly, they prefer to start from scratch. I, to be honest, I, f I find it much faster to, to do it this way. What I might do though, is I might just delete these back faces. So I start with a plane again. Okay, so get rid of those. So I'll just fix up this plane and then I'll put a shell modifier on again to get my low poly. Okay, what's really important with the low poly model is to make sure that you haven't got any verts anywhere that aren't doing anything. So all these verts are doing nothing and they can go. This vert can't go because if I delete that one then it changes the silhouette, it changes my shape. Same with this, if I delete that, it changes the shape. But anything like these ones can go. So all you need to do is to use target weld or to use connect or whatever you want to cut these up. So you can't, you have to make sure that you've got no n-gons in here. So if I had a look at this shape now, I'd have one, two, three, four, five sides. So I can't have that. But apart from that, there's no real rule. I just have to, they can be tries or, well, yeah, the rule is they can be tries or they can be quads. So 
So I'm just cutting these all into triangles up to the corner. That one can come down here. Okay, so this is now really as, as low poly as it can be. Um, I'm actually just going to cut that one down there to keep that a bit neater. I can get rid of that. So th this is this is as low. What's important here is your vert count. You, your um, if I just put on the statistics, so we can see total on selection. So generally, when you're modeling the games. You can ignore your poly count, ignore your triangle count. What you want to look at is your vert count. So this has got 12 verts on it, and it would be impossible for me to get rid of any more verts without completely altering the shape of, of what we've got here. So that's fine. What I will need to do probably is I want to actually add some more in now. So I want to create a bit more of a circular shape here so I think I'll need an extra couple of verts in there and there so that I can just shape that round a little bit more okay and I can go back to my layers I can unhide my high poly layer And if I isolate those, I can just use that high poly now to shape these around. So I want to get absolutely as close to this high poly as I possibly can. The closer you get, the better your bake's going to be and the easier it's going to be to bake it. So I really want them to be just about perfect like that and let's see we could also we could probably the fastest way of doing this is going to be just to get rid of those and stick a symmetry modifier on flip that and then that's back the other way Perhaps that, that can go. Okay, so with a modern game engine, verts, they can throw around a lot of verts. So if you, if you wanted to, I mean, for, for a box this size, it wouldn't be worth it. But if you did want to add in some more verts around here to get this even smoother, you could do that. That's, it really doesn't, it's really up to you how many verts you put into things like that. What's really important is that you don't have verts, like I said, sitting off on the edges here. Because that vert is pointless. So if you want to add extra verts to make something smoother, you can argue a reason for doing that. If you if you just leave verts hanging there that aren't altering the silhouette, it's there's no there's no reason why you, you should ever do that. Um, and certainly if you work in industry, they're not going to be too happy if they see that. They're not you know it, it's not going to make your work look very professional. So I can just put the shell modifier on again. And I just want to make sure that, in fact, I think I remember from last time it was point zero three, maybe. Yep. Okay, so that looks good. I'm out of isolation mode again. 
And that's it. I just want to go around now and do the same thing with all of my other with all of my other pieces. Just get them as low poly as I possibly can. Make sure there's no wa wasted verts, but keep everything into the keep everything into the shape that I need to.